graders, and welcome to Math here on BCPSTV. My name is Mr. Tang, and I'll be working with you on the second lesson for the week of May 4th, Telling Time. We are going to be working within a third grade standard of measurement, and we are going to be taking a look at time. Our objective says that we will tell time to the nearest minute by reading the hour and minute hands of an analog clock. Quite often when we think about telling time, we think about it in two different ways. The time on a digital clock in a digital format and then analog clock. Let's start off by taking a look at these four images below. Choose one of the clocks and explain to someone around you why it does not belong with the other three. The trick to this is that it doesn't have to be one right answer, as long as you can explain why the clock you chose does not belong with the other three, as long as you can justify it, then you have a point, you have a case to make. What did you say? I'm gonna go with clock C. I'm gonna say clock C does not belong because there are no numbers on the clock face. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You know what? I'm also going to go with clock B. I'm going to go with clock B and say it doesn't belong because there are no lines anywhere in between the numbers. That's why clock B does not belong. Did you say clock A or clock D? If so, why? I want you to think back to second grade. You've learned how to tell time to the nearest five minutes. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and learn how to tell time to the nearest minute. Look at the clock. Remember that the shorthand is the hour hand. We read that first. And the minute hand is the longer hand, and we read that second. Let's check in with Pearson to see what they have to say about time to the minute. How do you tell time to the nearest minute? Let's find out. The clock shows the time a train from Memphis is scheduled to arrive at Central Station. What time is the train scheduled to arrive? Write the time in digital form and in two other ways. Before we move any further, take a look at that time and estimate what time you think it is. Remember, our hour hand is the shorter one. And that is between 12 and 1. What does that tell you about the time? Analog clocks are tools that can help you show and tell time to the nearest minute using minute and hour hands. Why is an analog clock a good tool for showing time to the nearest minute? On an analog clock, the hour and minute hands point to precise locations on the clock face and help you visualize time. Digital form uses numbers and symbols to show and tell time. You can also write time using words and numbers. Step 1. The hour hand is between 12 and 1. The time is after 12 o'clock and before 1 o'clock. Step 2. In 5 minutes, the minute hand moves from one number to the next. Count by fives from the 12 to the 8. This is 40 minutes. Step 3. In one minute, the minute hand moves from one mark to the next. Count two more minutes. 
The digital time is 1242. It is 42 minutes past 12, or 18 minutes to 1. Notice how they were able to tell the time two different ways. 1242, 42 minutes past 12, or 18 minutes to 1. That means in 18 minutes, we'll be at 1 o'clock. So we already established that the hour hand is between 12 and 1. The time is after 12 o'clock and before 1 o'clock. To find the minutes, count by fives until we get to our minute hand. From there, we can count on one minute increments until we get to where our minute hand is pointing. When the time is 1242, why is the hour hand closer to the 1 than to the 12 on the clock face? There are 60 minutes in one hour. Because 42 minutes is more than half, or 30 minutes of an hour, the hour hand will be between the 12 and the 1, but closer to the 1. In steps 2 and 3, what strategies can you use to correctly place the minute hand? Count by fives from the 12 to the 8, and then count by ones to show 42 minutes after 12. Now you know how to tell time to the nearest minute. Let's take a look at another example. Our clock here shows that our hour hand is between the two and three. So we know that it's not yet three o'clock, so it's gonna be two something. All right, so next we have to figure out what the minute hand says. So let's go ahead and think back to second grade. How do we count by fives? Let's start at the 12 and count by fives to start figuring out the time. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Should I stop here at the seven or go on to the eight? That's right, we'll stop at the seven which means we have 35 minutes. And now we have to count by ones until we get to our minute hand. One, two. Okay, so we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, and 37, which means our clock says two, 37. So here we both have both the analog way of showing it and a digital. You can also write it in word form. 237. Great job, boys and girls. Now it's your turn to try. Start by doing your reteach 14.1. At the top of this page, you have some vocabulary and then some opportunity to practice your new learning. Next, you can move on to practice 14.1. Start with your guided practice session. You can print the documents or view it from the link on Schoology. Complete the problems on a separate sheet of paper if you can. When you feel comfortable and confident, move on to the independent practice. This will be turned into your teacher for grading. For additional practice and extension, move on to the next page of the practice 14.1. This will give you problem solving opportunities. And as always, stay safe, wash those hands, do the math, and may the fourth be with you.